It's 10:15 uh, at nine. Playing soccer without lights. We just felt like that was a good outlet for the kids. It's good. Yeah. It's the Russians versus versus the Americans during the soccer game. I just said, no, let's have the teams mix. It'll be Russians and Americans. Well, they would not hear of it. Am I in action? This is fantastic. Do you like, do you like the game? <laughs> when you're shooting me, I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I'm... <laughs> I have to make a documentary. Oh! <laughs> Here we were, Russians and Americans fighting against each other in this sport. And suddenly, it was interrupted by, I think it ended up being the owner of the field, and he was going to go call the police or something. It's a situation that uh, you can find everywhere in Russia, that you want to do something, and you'll find always someone who wants to, to prevent you. We took a camera down there to try and get it all on tape. <laughs> We turned together again, and, and we had a common enemy, and, and tried to get rid of this fella and say, no, no, we're going to play uh, soccer. Sure enough, when he saw the camera, he sure didn't like it, and uh, so we could play again. Yo, stop. I'm tired. In retrospect, I guess that they thought the Russians, of course, soccer is their game and that they would be better than the Americans. But I had played soccer for probably eight years. So we were playing and we couldn't understand what's going on. I was just like, yes, yes, my first international goal. Lo and behold, the American side won. It was not a wonderful experience. I think they were devastated. We were trying to be noble. Somehow we beat them. I had absolutely nothing to do with that win. We wanted you to see Russia, all of the layers. Thank you. Uglitch was this fascinating little city. It's just a typical country village. It's their uh, day of the city, celebrating the 1037th anniversary of Uglish. There was a group of children and they were dressed up in costumes and they were playing a game. They were in a circle holding hands. And so we were watching and they invited us to play. <laughs> When we got to Ojotino, we met Father Ihan. I don't know why, he was just the most interesting man to me. He had long gray hair and this long gray beard. The man smelled great. He smelled like, like incense or something he'd been burning in his house. And he's basically planning to put together this entire church again with his own hands. Father Eon uh, had for decades been a very famous production designer in Russian film. This is the director I work with him. Is an Andrei Tarkovsky. Though he was very successful at it, that was never his goal or his aim or, or what he wanted to do with his life. He wanted to be a priest, but the communist government wouldn't allow that. And there was a point there where they they said, "Your choices are very simple. You become a production designer because we know you have art skills, or." You go to jail, or you become a priest, and we'll send you off to, to Siberia. You know, he is trying to express his own religious beliefs through his work and and through what he's doing as really a challenge to everything the communists stood for. He took us and gave us a tour inside. We we climbed scaffolding on the outside, and uh, probably wasn't a very smart thing to do looking back on it. <laughs> but uh, kind of will do anything to get a shot kind of mentality. How do you say this is crazy? 
and we got up there and we were shooting Father Ihan walking down the, this little path in front of the, the Volga River, which I really, I'm still not sure to this day why we did that. It was really an amazing thing though because, I mean, I was sitting up there after all this preparation and though the shot itself wasn't all that exciting for me, I thought it was just kind of neat to be a part of something that I'd never been a part of before. All the day's work. In Yaroslavl, the Moscow Film School finally had their moment to really show to a foreign audience also for them their stuff, so to speak, and they chose to do The Marriage of Balzaminov. The Yaroslavl Theater is the first Russian ever made professional theater. It, it's older than we are as a nation, I guess I should say, and it's, that's an amazing thought. The theater actually seats 900, but there were at least 1,200 people, I mean 300 over capacity. They were standing in the aisles, they were standing behind the seats, they were standing in the balconies. We found out that you can only communicate with another human being if your message falls within their area of experience. Balsaminov is about one young guy who wanted to be a very rich person, but he wanted to be a very rich person with very easy way. He wanted to marry a rich girl. So the whole thing is about him looking for the rich girl and cannot decide which is better. And his big, big problem was he could not marry both of them. By the end of it, he lost everything because he was trying to catch two ants at one time. The role what I play in the balsam in